Okay, so welcome to my living room. I figured it would be best moving all my books in here to show you them all properly. Um, because they take up quite a lot of space. As you can see, we have a few large piles here. And then we have this massive mound here that's like eating my sofa. We have more in front of the window. More books here. And a few stacks on the window itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to organise them into like categories to show you. And put them on the chair. Now these usually sit on top of a um, on top of a chest of drawers and they sit three rows deep and about six six rows high. So it can sometimes be a challenge for me to find a book that I want to read, but it's not impossible. Of course, please bear in mind that this is like 12 years worth of book collecting. This is pretty much everything I've collected since I was 13. Um, a lot of this was either bought with gift cards or given as gifts. Um, most of it was bought in second-hand shops. Um, my particular favourite places for second-hand book shopping is in Wales. I know it's a fair trek, but we used to go on holidays there every year. And there was um, in Tenby. They have amazing second-hand book shops. And in Cardigan, there was this huge old house that the guy converted into a bookshop. It was like 10 rooms full of books. It was like heaven. But the guy who owned it was like this really creepy old man. Um, and he was kind of a perv as well. So he gave me like massive discounts, which was awesome. So yeah. Gonna start organizing this into sections and Show okay, you so we all. have our biographies and non-fiction, just to get it down and out of the way. Um, I'll start over here. We have In the Red by Alexis Hall, which is about a woman's journey of getting herself out of debt. I would really recommend it. It is a thrilling <laughs> read. Um, we have Vampires by Cos Constant... Constantinos, um, basically by this guy, and it's basically everything you'd want to know about vampires, basically. Then we have D.H. Lawrence, Apocalypse, it's an essay he wrote near the end of his life um, about his um, anger towards the modern world. Uh, West End Girls is a memoir about... Um, Life in Soho, London, post-war. Then we have Shopping, Seduction and Mr. Selfridge by Lindy Woodhead. As you could probably guess, that is a history of the history. Um, say that again. That is the history of the Selfridge's store. Eating Myself by, Candace, uh, by Candida Crew. Uh, that is about a woman's struggle with eating and weight. Freakonomics. Um, by Stephen J. Levitt and Stephen J. Dunbar, Dubner. Um, this is just crazy facts and laws and um, I haven't read all of it yet, but I have had it highly recommended to me. We have um, Swells for Teenage Witches by Marina Laker, or Baker, is it? Yeah, Baker. Um, I bought this when I was like 13. So enough said there. Um, it is actually really interesting, it gives you a bit of an overview of the Wicca religion and things. We have um, Girls Aloud, Dreams of Glitter. Um, I got this from Poundland. It wasn't entirely what I thought it was going to be. Um, but there you have, I have a copy. Uh, Where in the World is Sam Bin Laden by Morgan Spurlock. This is one of Nick's books. Um, I'm guessing Morgan Spurlock is a comedian and this is some kind of comedy book or something. I don't know. Um, Anne Applebaum, Iron Curtain, History of Soviet Union. Um, 
How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Pretty self-explanatory, that title. Uh, Secret History of the World by Jonathan Black, um, all about secret societies and how they have a grasp on the world. Six Weeks to Oh My God by Venice A. Fulton is a diet book. And um, it's actually really, really, really interesting. It kind of talks about how most diets, um, like fad diets, things like the five... Um, like, it just talks about how most diets in the mainstream culture are just set up to make you fail. Like, you lose weight, but then you gain back more weight than you lose originally. And then we have Girl with One Track Mind by Abby Lee, and this is a memoir of girl addicted to sex. Grace Bowman, Thin, um, I'm guessing you can tell what that one's about. It's a, about a girl with um, an anorexia issue. Breverton's Phantasmagoria, blah, blah. Breverton's Phantasmagoria is a compendium of monsters, myths, and legends by Terry Breverton. Um, got this from TK Maxx for $2.99. That was an awesome deal. Um, I basically bought this so I had a reference for story writing. Yeah, Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Life. Zachary Sitchin, The Stairway to Heaven, second book in the Earth Chronicles. Um, I have my York notes for The Great Gatsby, and this used to be owned by um, Sarah Thomas from Gwinnett. So, Sarah Thomas, if you are watching, I've taken very good care of your York notes. And they came in very helpful. Look, I still have my... Um, I still have my um, little plan here from our personal study. So yeah. Then we have David Peltzer, My Story, um, A Child Called Hit It, Lost Boy and a Man Named Dave in a Bind Up. That's it here. I've read A Child Called It and I found it rather sickening and um, I have yet to go on to read the rest of the books. Um, yeah. You have Niall Ferguson and A Scent of Money is basically the history of um, the people who own the majority of the money in the world. Financial history of the world. There, that, that, that describes it perfectly. Um, we have Chanel by Edmund Charles Roux and this is the the book that the film Coco Before Chanel was based on. I would highly recommend this version over any other Chanel biography. It is very in-depth and very, very interesting. We have Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. Um, this was adapted into a movie. This is her biography of her time in the mental institution. And look how thin it is. It's like ridiculously thin. This thing is like... Mm -hmm. 168 pages. Smallest biography ever. Um, we have A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. This is a an essay about female independence, I believe. I have not read more than a few pages of this because it kind of got lost in the sea of books. I will probably say that a lot during this video because it happened so, so often. We have Tony Blair, A Journey. Don't anyone comment on that, please. Um, I have not read it yet, so I cannot tell you my opinion of it. We have Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. I did enjoy most of what I'd read of it. Again, that was one of those books that went missing. We have In My Hands by Updike. Wait. We have In My Hands by Irene Gut Updike, and um, this is Anne Frank's best friend. And it basically goes through her journey through the Second World War. And we have Simon Pegg, Ne'er Do Well. Um, again, I have not read that, but Nick has tried to read it and he said it was a bit, a bit iffy. And we have Quiet by Suzanne by Susan Cain. Um, again, that's a discussion on um, introverts versus extroverts. Um, the Victorians by Anne Wilson. This is a a rather beefy history of 
the Victorian Age. And then age. we have Mary Antoinette by Antonia Fraser. This is the book that the film was based on. But again, it is a really beefy history of Mary Antoinette's life filled with um, pictures at incrementing times. And we have This Is Not About Me by Janice Galloway. Um, this is one of one of two biographies. She has a second one that was released last year. Um, I find this really interesting. Um, I do not know if I'm related to this woman. I may possibly be because um, my family's from Glasgow and she's from Glasgow and um, yeah. But then there are a lot of Galloways in Scotland so you never know. Would be cool though. Duchess by Amanda Foreman. Again, um, a history of the Duchess. Um, she's described as the Princess Diana of her day. I haven't read this one the whole way through. Um, but yeah, I will get to it eventually. We have the Fry Chronicles by Stephen Cry. Stephen Cry? Stephen Fry, even. Enough said about that. Why wouldn't I own that? Stephen Fry is amazing. Uh, the Frankie Boyle biographies, I haven't read these. These are Nick's ones. Again, with uh, Richard Hammond, that's Nick's book as well. I do want to read them eventually. They're just not really high on my priority list. Then we have A Beginner's Guide to Spells and Rituals by Teresa Mori. Again, this was kind of bought for references for story writing. We have Bad Laws by Philip Johnson. I kind of bought that on a whim from a charity shop because it was kind of interesting to know about crazy laws that are enforced in the country. We have Maria Horn Hornbacher. Yeah, Maria Hornbacher. Wasted. Um, this is a history of drug addiction and um, um, eating disorders and, you know, just how it affected this person. Then we have Inventing the Victorians by Matthew Sweet and this kind of debunks some popular theories about inventing, um, about what we believe the Victorians to be like. We thought them all of being really prudish and um, having a lack of humour and things and that's basically what this book is about debunking. And then we have Walking Backwards in High Heels by um, Sarah Vine and Tanya Kinderson, though no, Kindersley even. And this is basically this one and How to Walk in High Heels by Camilla Morton. They're like etiquette books for the modern age. I would highly recommend them as uh, gifts for younger siblings or even for your mother. Um, they're humorous, they're enlightening, they're hilarious and they are very very helpful. They cover everything from the basics like how to walk in high heels, how to choose outfits, how to change light bulbs, all the way up to what happen what to do when you get divorced. And that can be that can come in really handy, you know, later in life, just having that base knowledge in your head. And then we have the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail. Um, this is kind of the precursor to the Da Vinci Code, I believe. Um, I bought this years ago, probably like 10 years ago. Um, I don't think I've ever actually read it. We have The Female Eunuch by Germaine Greer because I was told I need to read this at some point in my life. So I have a copy of it just in case I do want to read it. I've tried several times. Most of it goes over my head, I have to admit. Then we have French Women Don't Get Fat. Um, basically the eating habits of French women and why they don't get fat. Um, it's, it's humorous and worth a read but I don't think it's actually true. Then we have Save Karen, True Life Shopaholic's Journey to Debt and Back. Highly recommend this. It's about a woman who set up a website um, to get people to, to either buy her stuff or donate money to get her out of debt. We have The Real Mad Men. It's the true history of the advertising age. And we have Richard Overy, The Morbid Age. And um, this is basically how Britain was between the First and Second World Wars. 
It's a really good book. I would highly recommend it. We have Pooh and the Philosophers, which is kind of an obvious... It's kind of obvious. It's basically a, like an, an introductory guide to philosophy. We have um, To Buy or Not to Buy, Why We Over Shop and How to Stop by April Lane Benson. This is really interesting. It's full of little exercises and worksheets to help you cope with a shopping addiction. Which if you haven't guessed by the amount of crap I own, I guess I have one. We have another nail, um, I'm not sure if it's Neil or Niall. I've been told that's Neil, but I went to school with a guy who had a name like that and he was called Niall. Who knows? But uh, this is Civilization, the six killer apps of the Western power. And this is about how there is a power shift from the Western world that's gradually going east. We have um, Judy Dench and furthermore, um, I'm a big fan of Judy Dench. I have not read this yet, but I will get to it soon. We have Helena Rubinstein by Michelle Fitoussi, and this is really, really interesting. Um, it's sad how her company has ended up, but um, the woman is very inspiring. Um, another two of Nick's books are sneaking in here. Um, you can't even see what I'm talking about. I do apologise. I'm so bad with this camera. I have another two of Nick's books. These are Jeremy Clarkson ones. He does really like Jeremy Clarkson. Um, they are really funny. They're just about life, cars, things that get up his back. They're funny. They're what we call a toilet read. Running with Scissors by Augustine Burroughs um, is a memoir. It's one of like four memoirs he's written. Um, I'm not actually entirely sure what it's about. I read it so, so long ago. I think I bought this like six years ago or something. Um, but yeah, I found it funny. I remember finding it funny. It's been adapted into a movie, so you could always just watch the movie. Another diet book. This came free with Cosmopolitan. Um, never really given it a try, so I can't really tell you if it works. Um, we have a book on post-war literature from 1950 to 1990. I bought this when I was like, going to go back to college and do English. Um, that never really came to pass, but I have this anyway, and it's actually really interesting. And it kind of compares texts and authors and writing techniques and um, themes and things. I would recommend it if you are at university. Um, but yeah, that's that. Then we have Nostradamus, again, for writing purposes. Marilyn Manson, The Long, Ro Long Hard Road Out of Hell. This is a really good book. Even if you don't like Marilyn Manson, I would recommend checking out the library or something. Um, just the way he was brought up and the little quirky things that he did. And he, there's like copies of his short stories in here. And um, just the journey of how he turned from Brian Warner to Marilyn Manson is really interesting. We have a hundred years of fashion illustration. This I thought was actually going to be a history of fashion illustration rather than just a book of pictures. But, you know. And then we have War Paint, Elizabeth Arden and Helena Rubinstein by Lindy um, Woodhead. This is a really good... Um, comparative kind of history of the two companies and their rivalry. Um, if you're a makeup enthusiast, I would recommend this because you would really, really enjoy this. And the last non-fiction book I have is 30-something and over it. Uh, what happens when you get up and don't want to go to work ever again? <sighs> that was a mouthful. I haven't read it yet, but it has something to do with... Um, you know, just uh, like having a midlife, midlife crisis and what Casey Edwards did with herself and then she wrote about it. Um, the synopsis was really interesting on Amazon, that's why I have it. Okay, so that was 
biographies and non-fiction. Okay, so next we have classics, literature, poetry and plays. Okay, so starting from here we have my Evelyn Woe books. I have um, Decline and Fall, Handful of Dust and Vile Bodies. I have Thomas Hardy, Tessa the D'Urbervilles. I also have um, another one along here somewhere. Here we go. Far from the maddening crowd. George Orwell's 1984. That's the only Orwell book I have. Um, we have Open the Door from Catherine Caswell. Or Car no, Carswell, sorry. I have the complete um, novels of Jane Austen. I also have several copies of them individually. We have Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell, which is amazing. Empire of the Sun by, why are you not focusing? J.G. Ballard. Ballard? We'll go with Ballard. Sylvia Plath, the Bell Jar. Everybody needs to read this. Um, your presence was requested at Savanto. I can never pronounce that properly. By, again, can't pronounce it. Male. Mali. Mile? I don't know. But Chapman, anyways. We have my H.G. Uh, Wells books. We have The Time Machine, The First Men on the Moon, and The War of the Worlds. We have um, the Bronte sisters. We have The Professor, The Tenant of Wilfred Hall, Agnes Grey, Wuthering Heights, and Jane Eyre. We also have um, Tom Wolfe. I'm not actually sure if this class is literature, but I decided to put it here anyway. And it's the Bonfire of the Vanities. We have Tooth by Milan Kundera. We have The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And we have Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak, which is an, an, an awesome edition. Um, again, this came from the Creepy Bookstore in Wales, and um, I caught it for um, like 50p. It doesn't say which this edition is, but it's quite an old one, safe to say. We have A Room with a View by E.M. Forrester. We have um, To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Um, to have two by Haruki Murakami. And um, we have Norwegian Wood, which my English teacher recommended us to us all, and Sputnik Sweetheart. Um, we have Gust We have Gustave Flaubert, Madame Bovary, we have Truman Capote, the Breakfast Tiffany's, we have my Charles Dickens, we have the Great Expectations, the Old Curiosity Shop, and um David Copperfield. This one's one from when I was a kid. I'm not actually sure if this is like an abridged version or anything like that, but it has like cool illustrations. We have Jeanette Winterson. Um, I do like Jeanette Winterson. We have Written on the Body, which is the first book of hers I ever read. I devoured it within like a day. We have Art and Lies and The Passion. We have My Fitzgeralds. We have Tender as a Night, The Great Gatsby and This Side of Paradise. We have My Lawrence's. Um, we have Son and Sons and Lovers and A Lady Chatterley's Lover. We have uh, Frederico Garcia Lo Lorca, Lor Lorsa, maybe. Um, and this is a poet in New York. We have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, and this is the movie cover. I think I got this from HMV. Um, back over here we have Esther Freud with the Peerless Flats. Looking Forward by, what are you by? Edward Bellamy, and this is an amazing, an amazing, an amazing book. Um, it's about a future where everything is equal. Um, Nick's better explaining it than I am, but um, it's kind of like the positive version of 1984. This is sort of like a utopian society. We have a picture of Dorian Gray, which I haven't read yet, but really, really want to. Then we have One Day in the Life of Ivan Denis Denisovic. 
I think. And it's by this guy, Alexander Souls Hennis. I'm not even, not even gonna attempt that. We have Phantom of the Opera by um, Gaston Leroux. Collection of short stories um, by Sarah Maitland. Women fly when men aren't watching. We have The Odyssey by Homer. Again, I haven't quite read this, but I've given it several attempts. We have Sophie's World by, jo um, by Justine Gardner, which is all about philosophy. And again, I would recommend everybody to read this book. Um, I do need to get a new copy because there are pages missing out of this. I bought this from a second-hand store. There are pages missing and there are pages um, which look like this. Like someone's written a note and torn out a bit of the page. So um can't say I've read this in a long time but I enjoyed it the first time I read it. Um, I'll tell you anyway. Um, I first read this when I was like 12 and I didn't fully understand it so that's why I bought my own copy because I previously had it from the library and um, yeah so I'm gonna have to actually purchase another copy of that. We have my um, Daphne Maurier books. We have Rebecca and the King's General. I could have sworn I had a copy of Jamaica Inn but I don't. Um, we have Goodbye Berlin by um, Christopher Isherwood. Janice Galloway, The Trick is to Keep Breathing. I would highly, 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 highly recommend this book. I will do a video at some point on books that I really recommend. We have A Beleaguered City by Margaret We have Vanity Oliphant. Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. Um, Save, the Walt Save Me the Waltz by Zelda Fitzgerald. And if memory serves me right, this is the same Zelda Fitzgerald that was married to F. Scott Fitzgerald. And um, we have Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. We have The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. And this is a book that was written in secret during Stalin's reign. And um, we have Go Tell the Mountain by James Baldwin. The ones that look like this all came in a set um, that I got for Christmas one year and they're all books that have been banned at some point in their existence. Um, we have Things Paul Fall Apart by Tunua Acheb, I think. I haven't read this one. Um, we have Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad and I've heard really good things about that. Covers the creepy. Um, we have House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. This is another one of those books that I'd started reading and lost, so I'm looking forward to finishing it. We have um, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Poems to Compare, selection by Raymond Wilson. I'm not sure if they're all by him, though. Um, I'm not sure, hold on. No, they were just selected by him and they're like poems with similar themes that are supposed to help you with um, like critical essays and things in school. I have selected poems by Ted Hughes um, from 1957 to 1981. As most of you know, Ted Hughes was married to um, Sylvia Plath and allegedly stole tons of her work. Allegedly. I'm not commenting on the situation. We have two books from... Um, two copies of William Shakespeare. We have Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet. Both well read and loved. I also have a massive compendium of all of his work. And we have the Virago Book of Wicked Verse. And this is a collection of poems from various... Virago Publishers. As you can see, there's lots of people there. And then lastly, we have The World's Wife by Caroline Duffy. Um, anyone who likes poetry needs to own a copy of this. It is epic 
have the Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. I'm not entirely sure if this is classed as a um, like literature or like classic, but it is possibly one of my most favourite books of all time. Um, it's about a girl who um, whose parents die and then she has to go and live with obscure family members who own a toy shop and it's very dark and really disturbing and her, um, I believe it's her uncle that she goes to live with um, or like a second uncle they make her put on a play of um, Swan Lake and it's, it's really kind of bizarre and dark and um, I'd really recommend it though so those are all my classics, poems, plays, and literature, or things I would class literature anyway. Yep. So that's that for now.